Jenny Lee, and I will sing whatever lyrics I want. Yeah, so as of this recording, Geddy Lee is on his tour promoting his book, My Effin Life. Great book, great read. Um, not nearly completed reading it yet, but it's an excellent pickup. Got a link in the description below if you want to get it for yourself. In this tour and these audiences where he's promoting his book, there, you know, there are people in the audience that have questions. Sometimes some of the questions uh, are about his voice about his singing. All About Rush has covered in great detail Geddy Lee's voice and his singing. There'll be a video in the card above. You don't click it right now. It's just there so you can watch it later. The different eras Geddy Lee's voice phased in during his career singing for Rush. I mentioned there and in other videos that a lot of people don't like his voice or didn't like his voice in the 70s for various reasons. But I'm noticing that a lot of the people who are reacting to Rush songs these days on YouTube, it's very rare that I find someone who doesn't like his voice. They like, they love it. It's real, it's because it's really different. I think they've not heard a voice like that. I'm not saying that Giddy Lee's voice is in the level of Freddie Mercury or Steve Perry of Journey or Ann Wilson or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I contend that Giddy Lee has a very good voice and he's a very good singer. I think that Getty is unfairly criticized and has been un unfairly criticized for his voice. Now, in saying that, again, <laughs> is a topic that's been discussed quite a bit. I'm saying that everybody has a right to like or not like anything. I mean, if you don't like his voice, if you think his voice is one of the worst in all of rock, that's your prerogative. That's up to you. But I think that a lot of people or some of the people, I'm going to give them the benefit of the benefit of the doubt. Some of the people who don't like Getty's voice don't like it because either they're just used to a certain type of rock sounding voice and um, Getty Lee's is way different than that. Or they just go along with, you know, what the critics say. And a lot of the critics at the time just bashed on him relentlessly. So what can we do about that? What can we do to maybe dissuade or convince or show these people who don't like his voice that maybe you haven't heard some of Geddy Lee's really good singing. Remember, we're talking about 20 albums here, and I'm including the Feedback album. He's, oh, he sang on it. It's a studio album. So 20 studio albums, not going to count live albums because that's a different animal. But I have gone through the catalog, and I've come up with 10 songs that Geddy Lee's singing is at least really good possibly superb and they're out there they're in the catalog i just think that earlier in getty's career he was a little careless <laughs> not in the studio live he was a little more careless when he was live because you know they're performing they're jumping around they're young and he wasn't going to always sing on key although i contend that he was you know within the range of the key enough so that it didn't sound terrible based on his method of singing at the time which as if you follow my channel, you know that in the early days of Getty Lee singing, I called him Screeching Lee because he did screech a lot. But it was very tasteful screeching, let me tell you. In any case, if you want to show someone what songs Getty Lee sings that are very pleasant, pleasant to the ear, or that even though he's screaming, there is emotion there. There's a reason for it. There's a method to it. And it's not random. It's specifically sung that way for a particular purpose. It was very deliberate. If you had a list like that, would that help you? Yes, it would. I have compiled 10 songs that I think Giddy Lee sang really good in, and there are more than 10, but I just went through and I kind of thought of them as Rush progressed, and I'm going to give those songs to you in a list, and if you think there are more songs or other songs that he sang better in, put them down in the comments. Uh, for you new Rush fans that are looking to react to Rush songs, these are some ideas. That, of songs that you could react to and also for those of you who just don't like his voice i'd say give these songs a chance give them a whirl and see what you think about it so here goes so the first song i'm going to talk about is rivendell on the fly by night album in 1974 that song it's just getty lee with alex on the acoustic guitar that's it there's nothing else and it's a song based obviously on the the elven city of rivendell in the lord of the rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. It's very, very delicate. It's a very delicate song. There's no screeching at all. Giddy Lee is singing very lightly, very delicately, and very softly. It's rare 
that he sang like that ever. It's completely in tune, completely in key, and it's, it's just a very, very beautiful song. So young. Geddy Lee was in his, yeah, I think the early 20s at the time. You could tell he's just a kid, basically. At that time, he could pretty much sing anything because his voice was so young. But you wouldn't think that someone would sing with such touch at that age, at that time of their career. But absolutely a beautiful song. little ballad there dedicated to Rivendell and the Lord of the Rings. The song is called Rivendell. You should check out Giddy Lee singing there. The next song we're going to talk about is No One at the Bridge. This is on side two of the 1975 release, Caress of Steel. It's part of the sidelong suite, The Fountain of Lamnet. This is an interesting pick, but it's a pick that, well, the first time I heard this song many, many years ago, I thought this was fantastic. Remember, this is a song during the Screeching Lee years, and there is screeching in this song. However, if you hear the whole Fountain of Lamnet, the story, the whole song, you'll see the progression of this character, because it is a story. There are other songs in that suite where he sings, you know, softer, kind of, a little bit like he did on Rivendell, but this song in particular, it's so different. And he's really screaming in this song, but it is a scream of desperation. It's a scream of astonishment. The way he's expressing himself, it's more like, how did I come to this situation? What's going on here? Why is this happening? There is a lot of high energy emotion in this song. If you hear it by itself, I think it won't have as much impact as if you hear the whole, the fountain of Lamneth from beginning to end, as you'll understand the story and the predicament that the character is in when no one at the bridge comes along. But excellently sung song, really emotional, really gut-wrenching. And I think there is, uh, you know, there are dynamics in his singing there as well. So I think no one at the bridge, if you don't like his screeching, I think this song is more of a deliberate screaming, a deliberate gut-wrenching emotional expression of the character. And I think it just fits in perfect, perfectly nicely. And you'll see that there are very few people on YouTube who cover the song because it's very difficult to sing this song by anyone because Geddy Lee really stretches the limits of his vocal range on this song. So No One at the Bridge, great singing song by Geddy Lee. Next up, the third song I'm gonna pick is the third song in the 2112 suite called Discovery. This is where uh, our beloved character discovers the guitar in the caves. And he starts messing around with the instrument, and then he starts singing. Beautiful singing again by Geddy Lee. You may not like the sound of his voice, let's say. Maybe that's what many people are taken aback by, but very good singing. There's no screeching in this because he's, he's just a nice humble guy who discovers this instrument, this guitar, whatever they decide to call it, actually. And then the story takes a tangent, takes a left turn this way because of all of the events that occur after that. In, even in the next song uh, presentation, he you can tell Giddy Lee's variation between characters for when the character who discovered the guitar is singing versus when the priests are talking or singing. Completely different. Giddy Lee nails that. But as far as singing delicately, and with purpose and on key, Giddy Lee does a great job. So I think this is a song that's worth listening to as well as to presenting a case for Giddy Lee being a good singer. Discovery number three in the 2112 suite. Fourth song I want to mention is actually on the 2112 album, same album, side B. It's called Tears. This is a very, I find a sad ballad, but I think Giddy, again, just showing that he's a really good singer that he doesn't have to be screaming all the time. It's just a nicely sung song. You can tell that he's using his voice in an emotional way. He's also showing that his it's not that he only has vocal range, but that he also has emotional range. In 2112, the whole record, you can tell he's all over the place with all different types of emotions that he can emote with his voice. He did it in 2112, the whole suite. And then with this song, Tears, he definitely shows, again, that he has a soft side to his voice and that his voice can express emotion. Not just that there's range there and not even the, as much that there's softness or loudness, but that the dynamics he employs to express an emotion with his voice is there and he knew how to do it. Tears from 2112, another example of Getty's great singing. The fifth song on the list will take us a few albums ahead and we're talking about on Permanent Waves. The song is Different Strings. 
This is a song that I lamented in a previous video that I wish they had performed live. This is a song written by Giddy Lee. Actually, the words, the lyrics, uh, which is a rare, it was becoming a rarity since Neil Peart was writing all the lyrics. His voice actually sounds a little more mature than it did in previous albums. If you listen to Tears in the, uh, in the, earlier in the list versus this one, which is like about two or three albums later, his voice is maturing. It's getting, I, to me, it was sounding a little fuller. Again, there's dynamic range that he expresses. He's not going crazy with his vocals at all. It's just a very beautiful song. And some very light, delicate playing by Alex. And even delicate playing on, with, by Neil with the drums. Nothing powerful about this song. Except in the absence of, its, of power physically, there is some type of power in the message. And with Geddy Lee, the way he doesn't have to explode with what he's singing, the delicateness of how he's singing, and it's just perfect. It's perfect the way he uses his voice for this song. So I think it's definitely worth a listen. Actually, it could be one of the first songs if you're presenting Rush, if you're a Rush fan, presenting Rush to someone who is sensitive to singing, this might be the first song you could present to them because it is a very sweet song, very sweetly sung song by Getty. Different strings off of Permanent Waves. The next song I want to talk about real quick is The Camera Eye from the next album, Moving Pictures 1981. Getty's voice is starting to mature as far as not having to scream anymore during this time. And he's singing more in his, speak in his speaking voice, which it makes it easier for him to sing. But he still has all his range, all of it. The singing in this song, very melodic, very melodic up and down the scale, especially during the verses. And there are some higher pitched notes in the song, but they're sparse. They're not you know, they're not very many at all. And the theme of the song, as far as visiting New York versus visiting London, the way he sings Neil's lyrics is just masterful. It's captivating. It really brings you into the city that they're talking about. It sounds like he really nails the emotion and the description that Neil was writing about for these two cities. As great as the instrumentation is in this song, I think Getty's voice is another great instrument in this song. So The Camera Eye for Moving Pictures is another one worth checking out as far as great singing by Getty. Moving ahead to yet another album, three albums in a row now. Now we're talking about Signals, 1982. A song where I think Getty Lee sings really well on is The Analog Kid. This is a song that is great for many reasons. It's one of my all-time favorite Rush songs. The way Getty sings, again, he just takes the, the expression in his voice based on what the lyrics are perfectly exemplifies the character in the song as far as what he was feeling it's kind of like you're getting into the character the way Getty is singing and it's not over the top singing there are some higher notes in it too but they're beautiful they're just perfectly placed in the song whereas before there was more a lot of high notes in many of Rush's songs now there aren't as many and since Getty is singing more comfortably he's singing more expressively I think you can tell that the lyrics are coming out more and more. They're being expressed more based on how Getty is using his voice because he knows how to use it a lot more now. He doesn't have to go to the high notes, but as far as the story goes about the analog kid, the way Getty chose to sing it, again, it's a masterful display. And I think this is an, another song you can show someone Getty is a good singer, and here's an example of it. The Analog Kid from Signals. Moving ahead to 1989, the album Presto. I had a hard time picking a song from this album because I think there's a lot of examples of Getty's mellow singing. He's like a me he's mellowed out as far as as far as his voice goes. I think Available Light is a good example of how Getty is singing during this era. There seems to be like some melancholy in this song, and then the, when the chorus comes along, his voice comes alive. Or the bridge, the bridge and the chorus, you know, his voice comes alive and he sings these higher notes kind of triumphantly. And he, he handles it spectacularly. There's no strain. Uh, it's just beautifully sung. There's uh, more dynamics as far as the singing in this song. And he's handling it wonderfully. It just exemplifies that there are a lot of songs during this era where he's singing just like that. It's, his voice sounds somewhat velvety at times because it's it's. I think his voice has fleshed out as far as a singer goes. And he's also, like mentioned before, learned to actually just learn to sing better. Now it's many, many years later into the career of Rush. He's like, sees the lyrics and sees the music that he's writing. Now he he's more like making sure that he can sing comfortably. Not like before, like say on an album like Hemispheres where 
they inadvertently wrote the keys a little too high for him, but he managed it. But uh, during this time, they're writing the music so that he can sing it comfortably. And since he can sing in that range, he can kind of go dynamically down and up with ease. And Available Light is another example of just how beautifully his voice matches with the music and the choices he makes to make his voice sound like an instrument that's just blending in to the song. Masterful. Available Light on Presto. So the ninth song I want to talk about is Everyday Glory off of Counterparts 1993. This is a very interesting song. When I heard this song, it's kind of you hear it and it makes you feel a certain way, kind of like uplifting. But then when you look at the lyrics, they're a little bit depressing. <laughs> but then the chorus comes along and then as the song progresses, it really is very uplifting. When Getty is singing about those depressing things, those difficult things to talk about, his voice reflects it. And then when it's uplifting, you, his voice raises up. It's inspiring. And he uses his voice beautifully to capture those emotions throughout this song. For emotion's sake and the fact that he's not over singing in any part, the harmonies that are sung with his singing of his own voice, they're perfectly done as well. This is a really good song to show how he uses his voice in the harmonies to fill out the singing, and it sounds beautiful. So I think another song you can add to the list of greatly sung songs by Getty is Everyday Glory. And the last song I want to put on this list, on this 10 songs that Getty Lee sings beautifully and that he sounds beautiful, is The Garden. The last song that Rush ever did. One of Getty Lee's favorite songs. He said it himself. These last albums, Vapor Trails, Snakes and Arrows, and Clockwork Angels, you know, his voice is golden. You know, it's older, and he really cannot sing the way he used to sing. However, there are some gems in this era, and the garden is just absolutely stunningly beautiful. And it's not even about his singing. It's the whole song in general, Neil's lyrics. Alex is another great, great soulful guitar solo. Giddy singing the way he emotes Neil's lyrics is absolutely perfect. Perfect bookend to their career. He sounds really good. I'm not crazy about the way he sounds live singing this song. Because when you're singing live and on a tour, your voice is getting graded at his age during the Clockwork Angels tour. Singing these songs night after night, it does a number on your voice. But in the studio, when you're trying to get it perfect, he can really focus and control on that one song that he's working on and the, I'm telling, the garden is a sweet sounding song it's actually one of his best sung songs because i think he loves it so much he loves the song so much and he loved it when they were you know when it was coming out when he was creating it and what it was becoming that he definitely i think was very excited to sing it as really as really the best he could especially it being the last song of their career check out the garden as far as one of Geddy lee's best sung songs and there you have it. Those are 10 songs that I think Getty Lee sings wonderfully in. Anybody who's objective can listen to these songs and at least say, yeah, he sang them pretty good. And they may not be crazy about the voice, the way the, the, the timbre of the voice, but at least they can hear that Getty Lee is a good singer. And these are great examples of that. Now, don't forget, if you want to catch my other videos, that it will be coming out. Please subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you like it. And watch these other videos coming out at the end of this one. And I'll see you in the next one.